Okay, in this video, I am going to explain robot configurations. What are the different configurations and one configuration I want to explain in this uh, video. First, what is the robot configuration? Robot arm geometry can be classified into the several categories based on the structure and arrangement of their joints. Here are the some common classifications. First one is a rectangular or Cartesian configuration. Second one is a cylindrical configuration. Third one is a spherical or polar configuration. Fourth one is a SCARA, selective compliance assembly robot arm configuration. And fifth one articulated configuration. Sixth one delta robots. Seventh one parallel robots. Like the several uh, uh, frequently used configurations, are these are the configurations. First, let us see that uh, what is the workspace. Before going to the configurations, workspace we should know that what is the workspace. Work envelope of a robot is defined as the locus of points in 3D space that the robot wrist can access. The major axis, axis of joints on the arm of the robot which determine the position of a wrist. The minor axis, axis of joints in the wrist of the robot defines the orientation of the wrist. Depending on the configuration and size of the links and the wrist joints, robots can reach a collection of points called a workspace. Alternatively, workspace may be found empirically by moving each joint through its range of motions and combining all space it can reach and subtracting what space is cannot reach is known as a workspace. Let us see that uh, uh, rectangular or Cartesian configuration of the robot. Robot must be able to reach a point in a space within three axes by moving forward and backward to the left and right and up and down uh, uh, forward and backward motions. So rectangular coordinated, coordinated has three linear axes of four motions. So X represents left and right motion and Y describes forward and backward motion. <coughs> Z is used to depict up and down motion. So the work envelope of a rectangular robot is a cube or rectangle so that any work performed by robot must only involve motions inside the space. Now let us see the, the typical example of how the uh, movement of the robot can be configured as a Cartesian coordinate system. Now let us see the, for the first uh, the up and down movement of the uh, manipulator. Now let us see that uh, the manipulator is moving up and down. The manipulator is uh, moving uh, up and down. Let me uh, use uh, the pointer so that you can see that this pointer is moving up and down. Okay. So this is the one motion that will moving up and down along the z-axis. We have to designate the three axis, x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Now z-axis is representing the up and down motion of the manipulator. Next, the uh, to and fro, the left and the right word that is the x motion. Now let us see that the robot can move and uh, the forward and uh, backward or left and right motion that is designated as a X motion. Next the robot will move forward and backward. You see that forward and backward it designated as a Y axis. Now in this uh, you can see that you can see this is the work envelope that is uh, de defined by this uh, maximum uh, the moment along the Z axis and along the X axis and along the Y axis it covers that space is called it is a workspace. So this uh, configuration is generally we are using the partition configuration, simple configuration all motions are in linear motions. There is no rotary motions are involved in these configurations. Only all the robots can move in linear directions only. So linear manipulators are only used in partition configurations. Now let us see that what are the advantages. 
they can obtain large work envelope because traveling along the x axis the volume region can be increased easily their linear movement allows for simpler controllers they have high degree of mechanical rigidity accuracy and repeatability due to their structure they can carry heavy loads because the weight lifting capacity does not vary at different locations within the work envelope so can use intensive pneumatic drives for pick and place orientations easy to visualize these are the some of the con advantages of partition configurations now what are the disadvantages they makes maintenance more difficult for some models with overhead drive mechanisms and control equipment access to the volume region by overhead crane or other material handling equipment may be impaired by the robot supporting the structure so their movement is limited to one direction at a time so guiding surfaces of prismatic joints requires a large volume to operate these partition configuration robots work space is similar than robot volume now let this is some of the applications of these cartesian configuration robots now let us see this is the robots having the these three axes now you can see this is the axis that is a z axis this x axis and y axis so with the reference these three movements this uh, and effector can reach to the any required position and see that another example of uh, the three axis gantry robots now we can see that this is the gantry this is a crane this will move along this direction and this device is also moving in this direction and it will move up and down downward directions by applying the different respective motors and this can be moving now let us see i want to for clear, clear uh, understanding of this cartesian configuration i want to show the one video Now let us see that. So this is the uh, the Cartesian configuration uh, uh, robot. Okay, we are using mainly for the the loading and unloading. In so the moment of the axis, you can see the symmetry. You can see that uh, the axis, x-axis, y-axis. These three movements, these three movements are moving in the real time. So we, we can apply. So I think I hope everyone understand this uh, Cartesian uh, robot how it looks like. Uh, we'll see that uh, the next configuration in the next video.